Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 157 of the Mo Money Podcast. I am your host, Jess Morehouse. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode. And uh, this one's a good one because uh, I'm going to be talking to Lauren Ferraro. And the reason I'm actually talking to her specifically is she's my speaking coach. Um, I don't think I've ever shared this. Well, I don't share everything about my life. No, do I? But um, so back in the summer of 2017, uh, I wanted to start getting a bit more serious about um, just learning how to speak confidently and know how to put together presentations. I was getting a lot more inquiries about doing um, public speaking and workshops and stuff like that. And uh, I, I don't have a background in that. Again, I went to film school. I was behind the camera. I was never in front of it. And speaking and you know, getting uh, red in the face, being nervous and just, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, that, that was me to a T. I don't, I don't generally like to be up on a podium and talking. I, yeah, it's just something that I know I need to work on. Um, but that being said, this is, that is a big part of my kind of job now is being, you know, out there talking to people. And I know it sounds crazy because I talk to a ton of people. You, I mean, you've listened to the podcast. I'm always talking. I'm always interviewing people. But honestly, I'm a huge introvert. And this is something that uh, I you know, still am working on and trying to overcome is this kind of fear of talking to people, fear of talking in public, and especially public speaking. So uh, instead of being like, well, I'm just not good at that. I'm just not going to do it. I'm like, no, no, no. If there's a will, there's a way. And I definitely have a will to be better at public speaking and, you know, feeling more confident and not shine, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I, I, I think I need to hire someone to get some help. And so I looked online and I found Lauren Ferraro, who is uh, one of the go-to uh, public speaking coaches in Toronto. And she is lovely and she is awesome. And she totally get, you know, what I was trying to get or trying to fulfill. I wasn't just, you know, didn't want to hire someone just to, you know, hey, how do I, you know, put together a presentation? Okay, thanks, bye. It was really about like, no, let's practice our breathing. Let's talk about confidence. Let's, um, you know, go kind of a bit deeper than just like putting together some slides. So I wanted to have her on the show so we can talk more about confidence um, and just feeling comfortable in your own skin and how... These are really important things to have so you can progress in any parts of your life, but also with your career and also with your money. So, you know, I, I personally feel like because I have learned, you know, these skills, especially over the past couple of years and just being more comfortable and confident in certain areas of my life that I never used to be, um, I've seen it kind of a little ripple effect kind of, uh, you know, in other parts of my life. So uh, even though I've been talking and writing and, and being part of this personal finance world for so many years, honestly, I would say it isn't it, since like the past couple of years that I felt really good and confident about all the decisions uh, that I make and what I'm doing. So anyways, I, we're going to get to a lot more of all of this kind of stuff in this interview. But before I get to that interview with Lauren, here's just a few words about this episode's sponsor. It's spring cleaning time, but I'm not talking about decluttering your home. I'm talking about taking this opportunity to organize your finances. If you want to prevent a headache next tax season and want to get your business in better shape this year, then this is the time to do something about it. Where should you start? Well, I use FreshBooks to keep my business in check, and you might want to do the same. For the past 13 years, FreshBooks has been making really intuitive cloud accounting software. And as a result, they've carved out a massive following of freelancers and self-employed folks like myself. Not only is FreshBooks ridiculously easy to use, it also has a number of powerful features. You can create an invoice in under 30 seconds. You can make professional-looking proposals that include a project outline, scope of work, and timeline. You can even link your bank account so your business expenses are automatically added to FreshBooks. You see, there's a reason I've been using it for the past few years, and that's because it's simple and it works. And FreshBooks is offering MoMoney Podcast listeners a 30-day unrestricted free trial when you go to freshbooks.com slash mo and enter MoMoney Podcast in the How Did You Hear About Us section. Once again, go to freshbooks.com slash mo and enter MoMoney Podcast in the How Did You Hear About Us section. Thank you, Lauren, for joining me on the Mo Money Podcast. I'm so excited to have you on the show. Actually, I feel like the first time I met you for my first speaking session with you, I'm like, oh, she would be great on my show. Obviously, you know how to speak, so that's a plus. But you were just, we just like clicked and I'm like, she is a badass. I like her. Ah. <laughs> 
a badass. I mm-hmm. like it. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> you are so, so welcome. Um, before we kind of dive into some of the topics for this interview, I want to get to know you a little bit more. I don't know. I think I've even asked you some of your background, but I know you've been um, kind of a, a speaking uh, coach for a number of years. You also teach a lot. Do you want to kind of go back? You know, where where do you come from? Who, who am you? I? Who are who, you? Who, <laughs> How'd you get you, here? <laughs> you just showed up at my office. You just knocked on my door and said, help me. <laughs> yeah, help me, please. <laughs> uh, who am I? What do I do? My my world is getting people to stand up and to, uh, if I, you know, not to sound too rah-rah, but bring words to life. Bring mm-hmm. your stuff to life. Speaking in public is a conference call. Speaking in public is is pitching something. It's not just uh, a TED talk. I think we think yeah. it's always like a keynote, absolutely, or it's some grand stage and there's lights and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and an an email mm-hmm. is speaking in in, mm-hmm. in public. All of that. Everything is representing either your company, your product, your service. All of these things. And we can spend a lot of time on the website. I mean, and yeah. you know all of this, and so do I. The website, the packaging. Isn't this thing yeah. beautiful? Here's the marketing. Blah blah blah. Continuing, continuing. Okay, great. Now tell me about it. Mm-hmm. Now get some funding for it. Mm-hmm. Now go on, you know, drag, you can Dragon's Den, a Shark Tank, mm-hmm. all, you know, the classic examples. But now uh, sell it to someone very quickly. And, and we have to remember that everything is a pitch. Everything yeah. is talking about your, your product. And, and so is also shaking hands with someone when you walk into a room. That whole, how do you network? Yeah. Everything when you open your mouth and uh, is representing yourself. And I think that one of the biggest mistakes we make is when we think we know ourselves and our product product service, mm-hmm. whatever, it is, whatever it is, whatever medium. We think we know ourselves because mm-hmm. it's us. Mm-hmm. Well, you can ask me anything. I, I know who I am. My name is Lauren. I'm a public speaking coach, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't mean you know how to translate it to another person. Yeah. And that's the biggest difference. Just because you know yourself doesn't mean you know how to talk about yourself. Yeah. So my world, my world started uh, early, early, early in the arts, actually. I, I was a singer first, and then I got mm. obsessed with with speaking in public and and voice work and, and how does one stand up in front of someone? So I went and to England, got a master's in this kind of stuff. Rah, rah, rah. And then I, I opened in 2009, I opened and then I started training at the the school. So I teach Mm -hmm. at the universities and colleges here all Mm -hmm. about speaking in public. Mm -hmm. So what gave you the courage to, to, not only kind of switch careers like that, but to start your own business. That sounds to me like now that I've been doing it for a little while, I'm like, okay, it's not as scary. But before you've started anything, that sounds terrifying to be like, I'm going to be a speaking coach. I'm going to open my own business. How the hell (laughs) did you do that? (laughs) Yeah. You know what? I always, I always wanted to, I knew that I I was training lots of people in, in radio auditions, film, lot, mainly actors, because of course their voices are, are everything. But I knew that I wanted to train people who who had no sense of this someone in the in the arts kind of generally has a sense of oh yeah I gotta I gotta you know use this thing or else I'm gonna damage myself but everybody needs to learn how to speak about their work Mm -hmm. everybody Mm -hmm. I mean we have one-way conversations now with phones so even more so I mean I opened 10 years ago and now it's even more dire because we don't share our thoughts verbally Mm-hmm. We don't quite, we're not as comfortable in a, in a, in a boardroom or a setting to put our hands up and, and yeah. say something. We are really becoming reserved, not becoming, we are, okay? Everything mm-hmm. is present tense. There's no future becoming. Mm-hmm. We, we are very reserved, quiet. We've lost permission to sort of own a stage, own your thoughts and be able to, to communicate. So mm-hmm. that's, if anything, more and more, I just want to grab everyone and, yeah. and give everyone permission to speak about themselves in a clear, articulate way. Yeah. Do you feel like, um, just kind of talking from a woman's perspective, it is women in general that have the biggest like trouble with, you know, voicing their voice. I mean, I just think back when you were talking about like, just like conference calls. I remember at my last job, which I was there for almost three years, I, it was a very different setting, very corporate, a lot of strong personalities. And I was, you know, I thought it was a confident person. And when it came time to being in a meeting or doing a conference call, I would just, you know, kind of be like that wilting flower or whatever. I'm also terrible with sayings, but you know what I mean? I just would just kind of go into the background and be terrified that someone would ask me my opinion because I just, I thought I would freeze. And that was something that I, over the years, I got better at, got more comfortable at, but 
I was shocked at how I'm like, I thought I knew myself. I thought I was pretty good at voicing my opinion until I was in a totally different setting. And then I was just like, oh, I don't, I don't know. A- ask this person. They probably yeah. have a better answer. <laughs> <laughs> I love the sound effects. Uh-uh. <laughs> it does represent what we what we're feeling, and it's it's a loaded question and, yeah, a, and a great question, and I and I and I and, I, and I'm going to answer it and dig into it. Ooh. The just because it's loaded doesn't mm-hmm. mean we don't touch on it. Mm-hmm. There's there's many things to say here. Is there a difference between men and women when it comes to voicing yeah. our opinions, being seen, putting our hands up in a boardroom? I'm going to say 100. percent Mm. Yes. And I'm getting mm-hmm. right up close to your camera. <laughs> there, there is a difference. And then, and then there's also, you can say it depends on the person, obviously yeah. it depends yeah. on the person. There is a, there's a lack of permission. And this is in my yeah. practice, in my uh, experiences, some of your listeners might go, I have no problem. Great. Mm-hmm. I have a, and, and yay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and keep going. Yeah. I do have a number of women who lack permission to exactly as you said to raise their hand and say hi i have da 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 to say this could be nerves mm-hmm. of course and we i mean nerves could be a whole other whole other yeah. episode this could be nerves all of a sudden you're on yeah and at the core of all of this we care what other people think mm-hmm. period and it can sabotage us to the nth degree or it could make us just a little bit nervous as yeah. you as you said <laughs> it gives us just a bit of this or it can completely shut us down to where we don't want to perform to where we know we can mm-hmm. so you've got to find uh, investigate is it someone in the room yeah is it a numbers game there were seven people in here now there's eight Okay, eight kind of causes my breath to go up in my clavicle because the sound you made and the reaction is us going up into our necks and up into our shoulders. And that's where training comes into play. That's where we learn to drop down into our, you could say diaphragm stomachs just for the sake of this, but you can drop right down into the lower part of your your body and know that you're safe, know that your environment is not going to attack you and you have permission. So there's Mm -hmm. a lot of things you need to tell yourself that the mental ticker tape, I, I call it, there's learning physically how to breathe in that space. Once something mm-hmm. tries to sort of uh, uh, attack you, there's what do I do physically? And then there's knowing that, well, I do have something to say. Mm-hmm. I do have something to say. Yes, I, d- I disagree with this. Or, or can I just add to this? Or not, you know, not even can I. You have, you have permission. And so there's the, the, the nerves and the physical and the mental uh, reaction that we can uh, work with. Then there's well, forever and forever and forever, my opinion as a female has been suppressed. So mm-hmm. then there's also that whole, uh, that's why I said it's loaded yeah. and there's lots yeah. of arm, arms to this. Mm-hmm. Then there's also, my opinion has never been recognized in this, this workplace. And it's not mm-hmm. just mine. I notice it in a lot of people. Yeah. And it is, at, as you said, very pertinent to today. Mm-hmm. And I have, I had a woman actually recently say, I think I have to become a bitch. Mm-hmm. And I said, whoo. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Here's mm-hmm. the short answer. No. And, and what I'm noticing, it's not an influx of, of women uh, being trampled on in, in the workplace. It's an influx of women saying, I don't think I have to take this any longer, do yeah. I? But I don't have a tactful response. Yeah. Well, that's another thing we, you work on is how to have a tactful, respectful, and decorum always Mm -hmm. response if if you are in that environment where you don't feel you can raise your hand Mm -hmm. so it is the mental ticker tape it is the physical response learning to breathe and then it's literally practicing what to say because it's muscle memory yeah what to say so Mm -hmm. it's it's verbally having permission to say hang on this meeting stops because i I, i'm not just here as a pretty face Mm -hmm. which is what was told to me the other day by someone else i mean there's just stories and stories and stories of hang on a second you're just here to look pretty and i said all right now this is what we're going to say yeah so there, there, there is a, yes, I deserve a raise and, mm-hmm. and, 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 and you don't have to uh, say, oh, I deserve a raise, you know, mm-hmm. with ego, but these are the things that I've done. And there have been studies that have, have shown that uh, men have more, um, even if they don't have the, the, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the resume to yeah. match it. Yeah. They will still, I, I get this job where yeah. women take a more, well, I don't have all the things on their world, still a little more reserved, but 
historically it makes sense. And, and I think we need to, I would never say we need to be more like men. I do mm-hmm. not agree with, with that, but I think we need to have more permission and you mm-hmm. can. And yeah. I think we need to say, yeah, if you only have seven things on that, on that yeah. job search list, go even three yeah. things. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. I actually, yeah, just read some study that, um, men will feel completely comfortable applying for a job if they have 60% of the requirements, women only if they have a hundred percent. And that is absolutely true because uh, number one, I am, you know, and I do it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) We all do it. it. We all do it. I think a lot of us women are perfectionists, but I also talking to other women I know, you know, I talk to a lot of women who are like, I'm thinking of switching jobs or switching careers, but uh, I know looking at the job boards out there, I don't have a hundred percent. So I'm going to wait until I like go back to school, get this new skill and then I'll apply. I'm like, or if you're really unhappy and yeah, yeah. That we're on a money show. We're on a money yeah, show. Yeah, and you're just yeah, waiting, yeah. and you're just waiting years to delay, delay, delay. And I mean, as I've noticed now in my 30s, I'm like, wow, time flies by. I'm so glad that I took risks sooner than I felt comfortable because I never regretted it. And I think that's another thing too is I, I think women a we want to we want to be perfect or we want to have all you know take all those boxes before we're ready so we feel more comfortable. But also we're just worried of failure and we're worried of taking that risk because you know. I don't know why we have this crazy fear of if we fail, it's the end of the world. For Mm -hmm. me, I've had many failures, but they pale in comparison to all the successes. You really don't remember lots of those little failures. Why do you feel like lots of people are, or especially women, are afraid of taking those risks? And that could just be like, you know, either, you know, applying for a new job, asking for a raise, or even just like raising their hand in a meeting because they have something important to say. I think it's historical, as yeah. as we just sort of said. It's something that's that's in, ingrained. It's valuing what we have to to offer. Uh, it also is just point blank really scary. Yeah. If you have three kids at home and you can't feed them and you can't da 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 da, you're yeah. not going. I'm just gonna quit everything. Yeah. I mean, I think every situation is is different. But yeah. I I like what you just said on the the rewards <clears throat> outweigh the, the struggle. And when mm-hmm. I, when I quit one of the, the schools I was working at, I was an overdraft mm-hmm. and I took a picture of my bank statement. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I had my friend and I helped because, and it's, I'm not on a pedestal and mm-hmm. neither are, are you, but it was mm-hmm. one of those moments of, yeah, five years will fly by and I'll go, I wish I had or something uh-huh. like that. And it's, but you can't do it and think that it's going to take off. Yeah. right away. You have to know you're going to walk through mud. Yes. You yes. have to know that, that that is absolutely part of it. You have to know that you're going to take a day off because it's the worst day of your life and you need to just boil the kettle and mm-hmm. have the tea and put the movie on. And that's just the rot, rut you're, yeah. you're, you're in. Yeah. Your phone hasn't rung for a month. Yeah. Yeah. You can panic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. <laughs> and, that, and, that, and, and that's part of it because next month you're going to go, well, where was everyone? Because now I'm so it's, it's this, yeah. it's this roller coaster, but I want to touch on, on, on something. It's a word that yeah. we've been using and I'm not a fan of it. And I'll tell everybody why I'm not a fan of the word confidence. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. I have zero patience for confident communications and, and mm. all of that because it's not confidence we're looking for. Okay. What you're looking for behind the microphone, behind uh, the, the, the phone on the stage, you're looking to be comfortable. Mm. Mm-hmm. And there's a big difference in, in, in my work. I want you all to be comfortable on that stage, not confidence. Confidence has grown to have a connotation to it where my chest is, is, is out. Yeah. And when you, when you train on, on at how to breathe and how to be present in a room because everybody wants to be dynamic and engaging mm-hmm. when they talk, we all do. They're, those are the top two words that I hear from everyone. We are, we are thinking that we have to do something in front of a room. And that's where my chest goes out a little bit. And confidence has that air about it. I want you to be comfortable on that stage because when you watch someone honest, and again, a stage Mm -hmm. is any medium. Yeah. Yeah. When you, when you watch someone and you know, you're in good hands, you're actually comfortable watching them because what Mm -hmm. someone feels up on a stage is what you feel sitting in a chair. We've all been nervous for someone when they're some or, and feel have utter empathy for someone when they're just Mm -hmm. bombing quote unquote, or they're forgetting something technology. We just have such empathy for them, but we're nervous for them at the same time. So I I want us to think that we are out to be comfortable Mm. up there. We're up to get out of our shoulders and out of our, our chests and soften them and welcome a room. 
Yeah. You're not out there to, here's one thing that your, your audience has to remember or has to start thinking mm. is stop proving that you're an expert in something. Yes. And that was, I feel like one of the first things that you and me oh, talked about. I know one they of my, can't see my arms up. Yeah, but yeah, your hands are up, my hands are up. But yeah, that was one of the first things that I remember talking to you about. It's like, I'd say, you know, I feel like I'm so close to being comfortable talking to people and going on stage. But the thing that's holding me back is I'm always that person that when I'm on stage, I'm afraid that people are just, you know, shaking their heads or going like, oh, this is, you know, crap. Or who does she think she is? Because, hey, I've been in situations where I've done a presentation. Someone's like, why should we listen to you? Like, I actually said that to my face in full of room. And so that is always replaying in my mind. Um, But I'd say those people are probably just kind of like online. There's the this naysayers, the cyber bullies or whatever. But in general, it seems like the majority of people are rooting for you. And that was like a big mindset thing. It's like most people want you to succeed. They want you to sound uh, comfortable and they want to hear what you have to say. And you need to remember that stuff. So I feel like if I had a microphone, I'd get really, really close to it. So I'm just going to pull mm. this mouth mm. mouthpiece really, really close. Mm. Here's the thing. We have a tendency to say to people, why should I listen to you? Mm -hmm. And I want you to reverse that. When you are prepping for a speech for all of your, my earpiece is just, (laughs) when you are prepping for all of this stuff, whatever it is you're, you know, prepping your PowerPoint, doing all of that, what do I want the audience to feel? Mm -hmm. It is about them. Oh yeah. Speaking has nothing to do with you. Speaking has nothing to do with, well, okay. 2%. Yeah. (laughs) It has to do with the, with the speaker. This is about the audience. Yeah. And I need, and see, it's, it's all about what these words and phrases do and say to us. That's why I don't like the word confidence. It's Mm -hmm. got a cockiness to it. Mm. Why should I listen to you? And one of the things that people get very nervous about is, you know, CEOs are worried about my employees are going to wonder how I became the CEO. Employees are going to wonder, my CEO is going to wonder, okay, who hired? Uh, They're going to wonder how I got this job. They're going to wonder how I got this promotion. So I want you to be more concerned with what am I trying to give this room? What do I, what do I want them to feel as I'm Mm -hmm. speaking? And you know what? Two things. There's a hierarchy of importance. So the whole proving you're an expert, please start cutting your content. Yeah. Stop cutting your content. Yeah. Because I don't need 67 slides in five minutes. You're trying to prove you're an expert. Number one. Yeah. Now, number two is you have limited knowledge. Mm -hmm. You have limited knowledge. You do. You don't know everything. Mm -hmm. So if I'm on a panel or on a fireside or I'm doing my my Q&A or anything, I know they can make people really nervous because they're not scripted, quote unquote. So we don't know what's going to fire at us, but that's all part of all of this training. Mm -hmm. You can be prepped for that. But all I want you to think of is that I don't have to know everything to justify why I'm standing up here. Mm Mm-hmm. That is being comfortable on that stage. Yeah. That's not being confident, let's say. And I am yeah. still always going to make a difference between the two. Mm-hmm. When you are up there and you're going, let's have a conversation as opposed to, okay, I'm, I'm ready for your questions. Again, it's, the, it's being prepared is yeah. everything. Absolutely. So no one is firing at you. Now, there are people that will throw a, a baseball instead of a beach ball. Mm-hmm. Yes, as you've said, tr- you know, trolls and people mm-hmm. wanting to take over your, your Q&A mm-hmm. and, and things like that. And, and we know that there's awful mm-hmm. people out, out there. But that's them. Yeah. And they have no reflection on why I'm up here. Yeah, maybe you, ha- you do have a bad panel. Okay. <laughs> I was running with ego and I wanted to be seen above anyone else on this t- panel. And I, where was my head at that day? Okay. That's where you were. So you have to take a satellite point of view every time you have a, I'll call it a a performance, whatever the the Mm -hmm. medium, TV, radio, you have to take a satellite point of view. Where was I that day? Why did I feel threatened? Why did I feel blah, 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 as opposed to just chastising yourself? Because my God, we love to do that. Oh my God, that was the worst, da, da, da. So I try to tell people, let's objectively, as much as we can, take the satellite point of view. Mm-hmm. What was working, you know, as if you were the, the master working with mm-hmm. your marionette puppets, how did this play play out? As mm-hmm. opposed to, well, I looked awful in my hair, da, da. Okay, yeah, so <laughs> like yeah. that's all part of it. But you've got to be kind to yourself. Mm-hmm. And working with kindness is so sexy Mm -hmm. and so attractive that that's the only way I want you to work with. 
That's the only thing I want you to work with. I want you to work that way with others as well. That is being comfortable about speaking, about presenting, about networking, negotiating the space on a panel, Mm -hmm. be giving as a, as a speaker, give someone the floor, but also, yes, you have your own services and stuff to, to pitch as well. Yeah. Well, well, I, talk I, for three yeah. hours about this stuff. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree. You kind of touched on a, a little bit like um, just the different kind of formats. I know we talked a lot about being on the stage or, or, or going on TV or radio or whatever, but for kind of like those those smaller but still significant uh, ways that you present yourself, that you're uh, presenting, that most people probably don't even think about as presenting, but I think it's a good way to think about it. You know, for instance, let's talk about networking and events, something that when I was younger in my 20s, I'm like, I'm terrible at networking. And I would just use that as an excuse as why I would never get anything out of going to a conference or talking to people at a party. Cause I'm like, I have nothing to sell or I'm not good enough. Or there's other more important people. And there's a whole, uh, I mean, I've been to a lot of conferences and you talk to a lot of people and lots of other people are bad at networking. It may not be you and the people that you're talking to and they're looking past you <laughs> and you're like, Oh, come on. I'm right here. Give me like another minute. How like can people, I guess, tackle this idea of networking. For me, what I've learned over the years is networking is a word that I don't like using anymore. It's really just about creating uh, a genuine relationship or having a good conversation with someone and making sure that you just don't talk about yourself, ask that person questions. But in, in your mind, what is a good way for people to get something out of networking? You, you, you've jogged my memory. Last week I was uh, working in, in Ottawa and not one person looked at me when we shook hands. Ugh. So can Ugh. we just even, just even, just even, come on, people, yeah. shake hands. So the webs, webs yeah. of the hands have to meet. None of this kind of. Yeah. Don't have a kind of limp hand shake. Yep. Nope. Yep. The, the webs have to, to match. Sorry, my landline is going. I don't know if you can. <laughs> I can't. I'm not answering it. To tell no, okay. <laughs> uh, the webs have to match. And please make eye contact. Mm-hmm. I don't, because you said what looking past and that's, oh what yeah, they're looking for someone think. better to talk to you. And I get it. There's other better people, but just, sure. you don't and, have and, to talk to me for 20 minutes. You can talk to yeah. me for five. And I think that's, the other thing too, that's really something that I learned is how to exit. I need to have an exit strategy for when you want to leave and not you're look just jog, you're, you're just jogging my memory. Cause I'm thinking of Homer Simpson, like dissolving into oh, yeah, the, into the, the head. <laughs> Uh, it's slowly tiptoe away. Mm-hmm. No, here's the thing. And I, I sort of touched on it before. I do job interview mm-hmm. skills because job interviews are also speaking in public. Absolutely. Everyone. You cannot assume again that you, because you know yourself and you know your company, you know your product and all that, that you know how to talk about it. Mm-hmm. So at a networking event, it's just you and you've got your business card and you're looking yep. great and, and it's all amazing. Have you practiced what you're going to say to the person out loud. There's my Canadian yeah. out, out loud. There is a difference between mumbling to yourself, looking at your piece of paper or looking at your phone and going, okay, I'm going to say this. That's, that's called mumbling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not helpful. <laughs> that's not, but we see that we see speakers prepping for meetings and whatever, whatever it is, uh, looking at their paper and kind of rumbling to you. So you're just solidifying mumbling and pacing back and forth. Have you gone into the bathroom mirror or, you know, on your way over in the, in, in the car, Hi, I'm blah, blah, blah. Risk sounding robotic because you will sound robotic at the beginning. Mm-hmm. You can drain out of sounding robotic. Risk sounding, I sound awful. Oh my God. You know, put your hand on your head, have the frustration, but I don't care. I'm happy that you've practiced out loud. Mm-hmm. I'm happy that you've got muscle memory in your mouth, that you have practiced yep. those words. Yep. Because why would you risk practicing out loud for the first time on something that's important? Yeah. Why would you risk talking about a past job in front of a potential employer? Mm -hmm. You practice, practice on the wall, (laughs) practice on, but what you think in your mind does not flow out of your mouth. We know we go on tangents. We ramble. We don't know how to exit as, as you Mm -hmm. said. So I want who you are, why you're there, what you're searching for. I want this in sound bites. I want it tight. I want it practiced. It doesn't have to be. Hi, I'm Lauren Ferraro. I'm a speaking coach and I'm here to look for blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, yeah. it doesn't have no. to be there. But as long as you've got your bullet points, mm-hmm. great. How to, to exit is, well, we can generally feel when it's coming to a close. It's been wonderful yeah. speaking to you. I'm now going to venture and I want you to go venture as well because that's why we're here. Yeah. So support them. Okay, go. We've yeah. been talking for too long. Let's, let's you know, humor, 
yeah. all of that kind of stuff is always my default. See, now you're all going to know what I do when I need to get away from you all. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Lauren used use humor and she told me to go find other people. She doesn't want to talk to me. It's not that. It's just how to not, um, uh, goodbye, I'm bored. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Or or the, the I'd say a worse thing is where it just kind of dies and you're both just kind of staring, trying to find staring that next person. Empty, it's like, napkin and, yeah. oh, it's just not, not okay. Yeah. And it, so this goes back to the permission. I have permission to go. This was wonderful. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go work the floor. That's why you're there. Yeah. So I want tight, short, short sentences. You've got to know again who you are. I'm Lauren Ferraro. You need to know what your product is. I'm a public speaking coach. And I want to know what, here's something that people sometimes mess up is you're not telling me what I get for my money. Mm -hmm. What do you do? What do Well, I'm in blah, 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 blah. I don't know what that is. Yeah, exactly. What do you do for a living? I need that to get much more specific. It took me a while once to get it out of someone. They're like, oh, well, I find money for people. They were a financial ad- advisor, but uh-huh. they were into cliches and jargon. And I was going, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. What do you do? Yeah. What do you do? I dig into people's lives and get them money. That is a way of putting it. We need to get a little more blatant. I, yeah. I hate, and I'm using the word hate on purpose, mm-hmm. cliches, jargon, all, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. Even if I've used one in this, in this podcast, we can't lead with them. Mm-mm. And that's a big mistake that we're trying to prove we're experts and be something that we think is wanted of us. Mm-hmm. We're, try, we're trying to, to err on the side of, of professional and, and look, and, and we have this look bigger than you are. Yeah, but I'm getting fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting lots of fake. Please rip up all of your content if it's filled with flowery jargon. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if you're in, a, if you're in finance and you're going to a financial conference and everybody understands your jargon. It doesn't yeah. matter. No. You are still trying to talk to a person. Yeah. So it's not, it's not dumbing anything down. It's not you know, bringing out your trucker mouth. Hey, I love a good trucker mouth, <laughs> even though I teach how to speak politely. <laughs> but there's, there's a time and place. Yeah. But the, the idea is that to, to kind of quote what's very trendy right now, getting real you know, yeah. with, with talking. But it's true. Yeah. Half the time I'll rip up someone's presentation and I'll say, what is it you actually do? Yeah. <laughs> or, or even a job interview. Well, I don't do anything. I don't, you know, everyone's grass is, is greener. I just go home and eat smart food and watch, you know, Cupcake Wars or whatever mm-hmm. it is, which is a great show. Yeah. <laughs> but you have so much more to, to give than that. And then I find, oh, well, I go jogging and I join. I said, these are wonderful yeah. things. So if you need to almost get the list out of who you are, what you do, what do you enjoy, all these things that remind you of what you have to offer are great for taking into a networking event. Mm-hmm. You have way more to offer than you, than you think. You have permission to walk away from someone mm-hmm. because you are allowed to, and just tell them it's not blatant. It's yeah. all right. I'm done with talking to you. I'm off to find someone else because yes. I can't afford to spend a half hour with you. Exactly. And don't just feel it, guilty and don't feel rude. Because there is, yeah, like you said, I mean, for me, I think I should just try to just be like, it was great talking to you. I'm going to talk to somebody else. Just like and be honest. Because sometimes when someone does that to me, I'm like, oh, good. I was done talking to you too. Not going to lie. They're going to be relieved. <laughs> exactly. No, <laughs> most people, unless they really are excited. I mean, and then again, you could follow up with them. That's where you have like, just have that initial conversation and then you could follow up with them over email. The the one thing that I've seen a lot of people do, and I think they think that they're they're just going, I think, a little bit too far and not being helpful where they may have done maybe their research on you and start talking to you about what they do and how they can help you. And they're basically giving you advice that you never asked for. Never do that. That's never helpful. It's like, you know what? I looked at your website. Have you ever thought about improving this? It's like, that's no. And I Those don't want it. Those are the spam emails. It I is. Get. But doing it in person, it's happened. It's like, that's going a bit too far. But just like you said, it's so, so, so just to like recap, it's like, your name, what you do, and how you help people kind of thing? Yeah. So I, I, I want to, obviously, I want to know your name. Okay. Mm-hmm. When you deliver your name, vocal delivery here. Mm. The reason why we can't remember people's names is, be- is because we're not giving people our names. We're right. Lauren Farr. Uh, my name is Lauren Farr. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. My name is, my name is what? Lauren Farr. There's a lot of R's in my name. I am Italian. There should be more vowels. <laughs> I've spoken to my parents about it. <laughs> <laughs> But we say, we say our names so quickly. Yeah. You need to have the tiniest pause between your first name and your last name. And I want every single syllable. Mm-hmm. So am I going to say, hello, I'm Lauren Ferraro? No, but mm-hmm. my name is Lauren Ferraro, not Lauren Ferraro. Don't devoice. Yeah. Yeah. So devoicing, don't, don't fall down at the end of your, your name, your sentences, mm-hmm. your company. So this 
actually, this is something not just in your, in your name, but when you give your presentations, please start punching more and more. Now I'm going to get a little grammary on mm. you. your nouns, your verbs, the things you watch from people, the product yeah. of public speaking coach. You're a, huh? We'd be like you saying, I, I, I have a podcast. Mm-hmm. No, you have a podcast. I have to, you have yeah. to give people your words. You have, yeah. I, if you want them to hear it, you have to give it to them. Yeah. So risk sounding ro- robotic as in talking sort of like this mm-hmm. and give, actually it is to give your name, give people your, your name. So I want your name. Mm-hmm. I want the name of your company. Obviously I want what you do, but not, Oh, I'm in a sales, blah, blah, blah. I help people find money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For me, it's a little easier. Public speaking coach It's kind of written on the yeah. can. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's obvious what I do, but it's, but and the whole notion of the, the elevator pitch does not have to be, you don't need to regurgitate your business card. Yeah. I don't need that. I need you to just talk with me. Yeah. So who you are, the name of your company, what you do, get very specific. And then of course you want to find out about them. Yeah. So get beyond, and what is it that you do? Mm-hmm. Get a little bit beyond, beyond that. You're here because who are you looking for? Who are you yeah. trying to, uh, and, and I'm very sorry that you have, people have come up to you and <laughs> told you how to fix yourself. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to work with those people. So it is what it is. I'm like, bye. <laughs> a little tacky. It's yeah. a little, it's a little, um, yeah. I was more like, I felt bad for them. I'm like, oh, you're not good at this. Are you? <laughs> but it's like, that's send okay. them love. Always sending love. Yeah. It's empathy. like, bless your heart. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I, I understand. But that's, then that is being comfortable. And the mm-hmm. learning how to walk away is again, permission to put your hand up and yes. speak. It's permission that we're, we're missing. We're missing looking like we have egg on our faces. Egg on your face is common. It'll burn for a minute. Next day is a, is a new day. Mm-hmm. We think that people are going to, and if they do, I can't do anything about it, yeah. that people are going to label me as such. Yeah. You know, you don't owe anyone to be glued to your inbox. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't get back to someone in, in three days, I mean, there is professional etiquette and all that kind yeah. of stuff, but there's also, you're a human being and I don't know what happened on your end. Send the friendly reminder. We're yep. touching base on this. Everything in kindness as, yep. as much as we can. And that is the energy you want to walk into a room. If, yep. if people want to be engaging and dynamic, walk into a room as a student. Yeah. Always, always, always. I don't care how many letters are after your name. Mm-hmm. It doesn't, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. There's no, there's no threat to me. Someone that has their name CEO at the end of it or Lauren, they're the, the wonderful. Let's get to work. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And that's all, all that matters because when it comes to, to speaking in, in public and presenting in public at the core of it, we have to know that we're just trying to have a human conversation. Mm-hmm. That my friends is R O I. I think I've said yeah. that to you before doesn't matter the emails, the technology, the blah, 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 human conversation Mm -hmm. and connection, whatever you Mm -hmm. want to call it, being with someone in in the same room, eye contact, touching their hands, shaking their hands. That is your return on investment. Absolutely. And I think, you know, kind of like we've touched on throughout this interview, no matter what kind of format this takes, whether it's a presentation, a job interview, asking for a raise, which I mean, my experiences with that has been kind of actually doing a little presentation. Like I got slides and all that. So sometimes it could actually look like a presentation, no matter what it is. It it seems like in order to actually get the ROI to actually get it, you know, to move forward, it's about being genuine, knowing who you are and what you do. And then, um, you know, just following up and being comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. That's what it is. And, and knowing who you are is not just here. Mm -hmm. Start writing things down. Absolutely. Please stop winging winging stuff. You can't afford it. You can't afford to wing stuff. No. And I think, and it it comes back, you know, with you're all wonderful, but but yeah, you've got it. You've got to practice. And that's a big thing that I learned from you too. It's like, don't, yeah, don't ever wing anything. Cause I mean, you may think in your mind, Oh, I think that went better than, you know, I thought it's like, yeah, well, <laughs> maybe ask the audience what they thought it's, <laughs> the presentations I've really liked are the ones that are the most prepared, you know, cause it's, it, it, it looks like, Oh, they've done their homework. They're really, they care about what I think as an audience member and they're more memorable. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, where and the audi- audiences are way more forgiving than than we think. Mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I get asked, Lauren, should I have a piece of paper in front of me? Should I have cue cards? Uh, no to cue cards, but yeah. that's just the thing. Yeah. And no laser pointers. My yeah. God, let's, let, can we do this for three hours? <laughs> uh, but if I have something last minute, because people do have a lot of things last, last minute, manager's gone down mm-hmm. and you have to present the quarterly budget, whatever it is, what's wrong with having a piece of paper in your hand? Mm-hmm. I lecture at the universities all the time. Hang on, guys, I got to check to make sure. And I'm looking down that I've told you everything I wanted to. Who cares? Yeah. That I'm taking a second for myself. We are way more forgiving yeah. than people think as they're prepping. Hold your peeps piece of paper in your if someone's on a panel and they have a piece of paper, great. Mm-hmm. They are comfortable up yeah. there to do that and make sure that I hear everything that they want to say. Absolutely. Forgive yourselves because the audience doesn't care. No, they just want to get that information that you've got. Really, they want to learn something. Um, thanks so much, Lauren, for taking the time to chat with me about all things you know, about comfort and being, you know, a strong, confident. I know you don't. Now, I like that word. I'm sorry, but I totally you're get all, what you're saying. I get, you can I get use it. it. I get, I, I get where you're, I get where you're coming from. Where can more people find more information about you in case they uh, want to learn how to be a better speaker? Lauren Ferraro.ca is me. You, if you, if you look today and then look next week, I've got a new website coming up. Ooh. So you're not in the wrong place. It's awesome. just, I'm about to flip the switch, but Lauren Ferraro.ca is me. Fabulous. Well, thanks so much for chatting with me. Thank you. And that was episode 157 of the Mo Money podcast with the awesome Lauren Ferraro. Make sure to check her out at laurenferraro.ca or just check out the show notes, jessicamorales.com slash 157. I'll put uh, more information about her in there. She is a boss and I I think she's amazing. So hopefully uh, listening to this episode, you feel a bit more you know, confident or, you know, have some enthusiasm and be like, yeah, I'm going to tackle a skill that I'm not good at, or I'm going to do something, take a risk. I'm going to just go out there and be a boss because you are a boss. Don't forget that. Um, a couple things to share with you. Um, but before I get to that, just a few words about this episode's sponsor. Track your hours, format the estimate, work out taxes, capture your expenses, chase that late payment, prepare the invoice, submit the proposal. Welcome to the worst part of being a freelancer, otherwise known as paperwork. The good news is that the good people at FreshBooks have created a ridiculously easy cloud accounting software for freelancers that turns tackling these time-sucking, never-ending tasks into no big thing. Send a polished invoice in 30 seconds, set yourself up to get paid online in two clicks, and manage your expenses by taking pictures of receipts from your phone. Oh, and if you need to whip up a quick proposal to land the gig... FreshBooks has you covered too. Now you can include an outline of your project, scope of work, and a timeline as part of your estimate. No more switching software, no more fussing over style and formatting, and most importantly, no more wasting your precious time. To find out all the ways FreshBooks will transform how you deal with your paperwork and to get a free 30-day trial, go to freshbooks.com slash mo and enter a Mo Money podcast in the How Did You Hear About Us section. Once again, that's freshbooks.com slash M-O and enter Mo Money Podcast in the How Did You Hear About Us section. All right. So as I teased last week, um, uh, very exciting news that I'm so excited to finally share with you guys. So um, first off, if you go to richandfit.co, so richandfit.co, you will find a beautiful website that I just created that has all the information about Rich and Fit, um, including the Rich and Fit Bootcamp, Rich and Fit Financial Foundations, Rich and Fit Fitness Foundations, and our free course, Rich and Fit Detox. So, you know, it's getting a bit nicer outside, you know, it's kind of spring cleaning time. If you want to take this opportunity to finally take a hold on your finances, finally, you know, get fit and healthy, lose some pounds, feel better in your own skin, just like we talked about uh, in this episode. Uh, Well, this is probably, you know, a good idea to check out richandfit.co. We have uh, three courses now all about how to get fit, how to uh, tackle your finances and feel better about yourself. Like, and this is sort of self-promotion, but whatever, but I actually use the fitness stuff that we have in the um, fitness courses for my own fitness. Those are the workouts that I do because I don't like going to the gym. I don't, you know, want to, I hate going to the gym. I just hate it, but I want to get fit. I want to be healthy. So 
I still use the the meal plans in the course. I still do the workouts in my house and they're, they're awesome if I do say so myself. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, all that being said, if you are interested in uh, taking any of our courses, well, since you're listening and since we just launched our new website and opened up registration for all of these courses, including our two, uh, you know, uh, fitness foundations and financial foundations courses, well, I'd like to offer you a little uh, special promo code so you can get a little discount to encourage you to sign up and get to work. So uh, if you use promo code Mo Money, you will get get 20% off any of our courses for a limited time, of course, but uh, definitely check it out, richandfit.co. Use pro, uh, the promo code Mo Money to get 20% off. Also, um, an extra, I mean, there's a couple different bonuses that are on the website you can uh, see, but one awesome bonus is if you sign up for the Rich and Fit Bootcamp or Rich and Fit Financial Foundations, you get a free one-on-one counseling session with myself valued at $150. So take advantage. Richandfit.co is where you can find all that information. Well, that is it for me. I am currently um, hanging out in the Catskills, New York State, and then I'm going to NYC for a little uh, personal trip, and then I'll be back, and then I'll be off shortly after that to go to San Francisco. It's a bit of a crazy month in May. Um, I don't know how I'm going to survive, but I'm tired just thinking about it. So that's what I'm doing this month. But of course, I'm going to be back here next Wednesday, as always, because I never miss a Wednesday, uh, with a fresh new episode of the podcast. So if you like what you're listening to, make sure to subscribe or do one better. Leave me an iTunes review. I will give you a shout out on a future episode and I'd really appreciate it. So thank you so much for listening to this episode. I'll catch you back here with a fresh new episode next Wednesday.